What things are we most nostalgic about from the 1990s? Well, if it isn't Tamagotchi, her new favorite pet. Yes! Should parents limit how much their children are using technologies like iPads and video games? Taking into consideration everything that technologies bring, I think it outweighs the drawbacks, the downsides. The average 18-year-old in the United States is on pace to spend 93% of their remaining free time looking at a screen. Should schools have required education about moderating your use of social media? Because I remember when Mira just started school, those first two years, her teacher was a real authority for her. What technologies have been most life-changing for us in the last 30 years? Let's go back to the 1800s and the telephone. When the telephone was invented, the first thing people said, said, why on earth would I need this? Which is exactly what my dad said about the internet. Has technology made our lives better or worse? Future. That's where you're going. That's right. Aww, uh, yeah, Global Citizen. This is Ethan from Real Life English, where every single week it is our mission to take you beyond the classroom to speak English confidently and naturally, to connect to the world, and to actually use your English as a doorway to living your greatest life. And Ksenia, all this talk about the 90s, it really gets me thinking because anytime I spend time with my nephews, one thing that I notice is that they are growing up so much differently than I did. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's not that long. It's like, you know, 30 years, even less than 30 years of difference between me and them. And one place where I've observed this, something is actually, it bothers me a little bit seeing this because when we got to eat, and like last year with the entire family, with Jordy, with my parents, my brother and sister-in-law, and their, their two kids, my nephews, we went to Mexico and we were in all inclusive. So we were eating out every meal together there at the resorts together. And the kids were always with their iPads, with their uh -huh. iPads or with the Nintendo. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> because otherwise, if, if they don't have a device in front of them, they go kind of crazy, yeah. you know, and no yeah. one can enjoy their meal or anything. When I was a kid though, Something, in fact, that was kind of fun, I don't know if you had this in the Ukraine, is that restaurants, their kids' menus, a lot of restaurants, not every single one, but a lot of them, would actually be with like a, a picture that you would color in. So they would give you crayons mm -hmm. and that would keep mm -hmm. you occupied. Mm -hmm. Or otherwise, you just had to talk to the adults, you know, and it, it allowed you to work on your socialization and so on mm -hmm. as a kid. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you, as I'm thinking about this, do you feel that all this technology that we have nowadays, has our life gotten better or worse because of it? Okay, that's a difficult and tricky question, Ethan. Uh, first, let me tell you that I feel you about those gadgets at the table. So I'm that strict mom that doesn't allow that. It doesn't happen mm. at our home. Like, I mean, every time we sit at dinner or lunch, uh, okay, we, we don't take our phones with us. Kids and, and adults. <laughs> kids and adults. It's difficult. It's more <laughs> difficult for adults. Sometimes we really want to check something up. Yeah. But my you know, dad's actually worse than my nephews, even with his having his phone at the table. I can totally <laughs> relate. I always like you know reprimand my partner, like saying like, "Hey, just put down the phone. We are eating here, <laughs> and you are not showing good example to Mira, <laughs> right?" And Mira, when she eats alone, for example, um, sometimes she asks to give her her tablet because she says, like, I'm just mommy, I feel bored. Let me watch some movie, you know, some <laughs> cartoons. If weighing all the pros and cons, I think we'll have an opportunity to discuss some of those during today's podcast. But if taking into consideration everything that technologies bring, I think it outweighs the drawbacks, the downsides. So I would say it does make our lives better. But we should be careful and we should be, you know, aware of so many things now. I do want to ask you about some of the words before I comment on what you just said. So you use some really nice vocabulary, advanced vocabulary here, and people can also get the vocabulary flashcards over in the app, of course. But just now you said that there's drawbacks and downsides, which mean the same thing. Yeah. They're both really nice advanced terms. What does that mean? Uh, this is something negative, so negative sides. You know, maybe the most common uh, phrase is pros and cons. So mm -hmm. pros, something positive, cons, something negative. And you said gadgets. 
which uh-huh. of course is just technology devices, right? And you reprimand your partner. What does it mean to <laughs> reprimand someone? It's just like, you know, I think let people them- watching, it's like this. That's <laughs> 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 yeah. Where you wag your finger. At yeah, them. <laughs> it's just like uh, drawing, the, uh, drawing their attention to something that I think is wrong, something like that. You could also say scold. Scold. That's oh, a, it's another, another good word, mm-hmm. scolding. Mm-hmm. So, what it made me think, you said that Mira often, if she's eating alone, she asks to watch something. I did have this when I was a kid because I remember very clearly Sunday morning cartoons. Mm-hmm. That Sunday morning is the best morning of the week for watching cartoons. Yeah. So, I would watch. Scooby Doo mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. the Looney Tunes, Smurfs. I think I watched sometimes. I don't think I particularly liked it, but we we saw that earlier. And I remember I would like make my bowl of cereal and go sit on the floor in front of the okay. TV, wouldn't use the the sofa and watch. Mm-hmm. But the thing that's changed. So if we're looking at maybe a downside for kids is they just have this unlimited plethora, huge quantity at their disposal of tons and tons and tons of kids series that they can watch on Netflix, on Disney yeah. Plus, on all these other streaming yeah. platforms, right? True. I don't know even how you deal with that with <laughs> Mira. <laughs> <laughs> well, so first of all, I think it comes from the family. When I was a kid, again, just the same way as it is now for Mira, we were not eating in front of TV. So we didn't have a TV in our kitchen, which sometimes mm-hmm. is common right now. Yeah, I don't know if you had a TV set in your kitchen. We didn't have. So having meals was always without a TV set. And of course, we didn't have any gadgets back then. But we would go and have our cup of tea with the series or with the movie. So it was like a dessert. So mm-hmm. you would be allowed to have a dessert, have some tea in front of the TV. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So it was a reward or something or you could think so you could think so yeah Yeah. but um i would agree with you with something that you said at the very beginning that back then we had so many more opportunities for socializing for talking to each other Mm -hmm. it's something that i try to cultivate right now when we are having our meals together with our family Mm -hmm. mira comes back from school late So we don't have lunch together, but we do have dinner together. And every time we have dinner, I, this is the time for me to ask how her day, uh, you know, was, what was the most interesting part of her day at school, what she learned new, right? So we're exchanging Mm -hmm. like the news from, from the day in that time. So imagine having this, like a conversation in the family and just everyone checking their phones. And you used a nice word here, the plethora. Yeah, something, Mm -hmm. a huge amount of something at their disposal. You said that kids have so much things at their disposal, so many cartoons, great choice, Mm -hmm. that they have access to it, right? With Netflix, again, you know what's interesting? I see more benefits here than the negative sides, the downsides to it. Because right now, when she sees some movie, a trailer from Netflix you want to watch, and now she figures out that there is no Ukrainian dubbing, but she really want to mm. watch it. She still watches it and it is in English. So it's so cool, you know, <laughs> that she exposes so see, herself to English. <laughs> you said downside. So the opposite would be upside. My nephews don't have that upside of yeah. watching some series. Yeah. I told even my brother when they were young, it's like, you should have them watch all their TV in Spanish because then at least they'll be able to understand it really well. But they never gotten the habit of that, unfortunately. So just a quick interruption and we'll get back to today's podcast. So guys, we are completely committed to making these podcast lessons better and better for you. But I really need your help to make that a reality. So I have a short survey. It should just take you about 10 minutes to fill out. And with this, we're really looking for your honest feedback. We want to know truly what you think about these lessons, what is useful for you in these lessons and what we can do better, what we're not providing for you with these lessons or even what makes you bored in general when you listen to them. All right, so we would truly appreciate it if you take just 10 minutes to fill that out. It's linked in the description. And again, let us know what you truly think about these lessons and how we can make them the best English lessons in the world for you. I imagine it must be hard as a parent as well because in the end too, you could be that really strict parent who says, you know, only 30 minutes of a series a day or only Mm -hmm. watching TV on the weekends, Um, no iPad, no video games, so on. But I think the thing's difficult when they go to school and when they make friends and so on, and 
maybe they go over to a friend's house and their friend has completely different rules yeah. and it's it's difficult right that we'd say like keeping up with the joneses oh sort of what's that when there's like a, a neighborly competition when you're mm. trying to maybe this is a bit different but it's almost for kids keeping up with the joneses looks like you know oh my friend next door has this video game how come i can't <laughs> have it or mm-hmm. he gets to watch tv series while he's having lunch how come i can't right you're yeah. continuously dealing with that as a parent Sounds familiar. <laughs> it sounds like a challenge nowadays because there's just so much more of this, right? Mm-hmm. At their mm-hmm. disposal again. Oh, Ethan, and for our English learners, could you please define one more time this phrase you use, like keeping up with the Joneses? Yeah, so I sort of described what it was like for kids. This generally applies more to when we're trying to compete sort of a friendly way with the neighbor. So your neighbor gets a really nice car and you have to get a really nice car to compete or how people, for example, the green lawns, yeah, the yeah. grass that people have mm-hmm, in front of their mm-hmm. houses is very American, I believe. You know, you don't want to have brown grass because it'll look bad compared to the neighbors. So mm-hmm, there's things mm-hmm. like this or mm-hmm, Christmas mm-hmm. decorations, Halloween decorations. There is always this a part of uh, healthy competition. I hope it stays healthy, healthy competition. (laughs) (laughs) I think there's some movies that they play with that, right? Where it becomes unhealthy. Okay. And by the way, we talked here about Netflix. I remember, like, of course, we didn't have Netflix in our childhood, right, Ethan? I don't know about uh, the States. You would tell me. I would be interested if there there was any streaming or, I don't know, probably there was, like, a channel for kids. I don't know. Where cartoons yeah. would just run all day long. Cartoon Network. Did you have that one? No, we didn't. Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, and Disney Channel. Those were the the big ones for kids. Mm. I, I had the, the number, you know, on the remote memorized for those channels. Oh, ah, okay. So <laughs> I think we had some... Okay, so there was um, time of day for several kids' movies or cartoons in the row. Mm-hmm. So basically, when you come from school and have your lunch, after that, that was exactly that time when you would have like four or five cartoons in a row yeah. on a certain channel. I mm-hmm. don't believe, maybe we did have it. Honestly, I don't believe if we had just, you know, a specialized channel for cartoons running all day long. Really? Yeah, I don't remember it. But coming, if like not talking about like childhood, childhood, my teenage years, for example, you know what I did? And I'm curious to hear if you did the same. Maybe not. <laughs> here in Ukraine. So we would buy the local newspaper, just like with some news and advertisements, you know. And every mm-hmm. newspaper had the schedule of TV programs for the whole week. Oh. So what I would do, I would take a pencil at the start of the week and I would highlight everything I would want to watch during the week. So I sense. would make my own schedule for watching movies, for watching shows. Mm-hmm. How about you? Anything like that? There was tv guide when i was a kid and it was very similar that it was this magazine sort of thing that you get every Mm -hmm. month maybe that had all of the programming for the different channels i don't remember using that when i was a kid but my parents did and then when i was a teenager i don't remember exactly when this happened but there was something in the states that became very famous called tivo which would Mm. allow you to record different tv programs and so i would do that you know i would go through and record all episodes of the programs that I like to watch. And then, you know, they were there when I wanted them. And streaming really is what trumped that ultimately because, well, my parents, I think, still have this, but I think young people nowadays, we only watch on different platforms mostly. You you use the word, I don't think I know it. You said that this, this recording thing, tr- mm-hmm. trumped uh, yeah. streaming? Streaming trumped the recording. So... Trump, I believe, comes from not the president. <laughs> yeah, the ex-president. <laughs> sounds like that. <laughs> uh, it comes from uh, card games, I believe, where if a card trumps another card, it means it is more powerful or ah, it beats that card. Okay. So using it figuratively here is basically saying that, you know, it was superior to mm-hmm. the previous technology that we had where with TiVo where we could record programs. Okay. So it like took it over, maybe. Can you say so? Like... Mm-hmm. Streaming platforms took over those recordings. I wanted to just briefly segue into the history of Netflix because I think most people from who didn't live in the States, they might not have witnessed this phenomenon. 
of how they just think of Netflix as a streaming platform, but it really started out as a DVD by mail service, which was really revolutionary because I grew up with Blockbuster that at first they had the the VHS Mm -hmm. and Blockbuster was kind of shady, meaning that they did things that weren't so ethical. Like if you were one day late, they would charge you these absurd fees. It's like a renting company. You would go there, Mm -hmm. you would come to them and rent a cassette or a VHS. VHS. Blockbuster was the most famous one by far and they don't exist anymore. And I think that that's good because they they weren't the most ethical or creating the most value for their customers Mm -hmm. sort of Mm -hmm. company. But they would charge you, for example, if you didn't rewind the VHS. That oh like really the, the early days yeah if you returned it unrewinded so you'd be there you know with a pencil <laughs> i don't know if you remember this like yeah. <laughs> screwing a pencil into the back of the vhs to rewind mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. yeah i remember that yeah i would mostly do it with the cassette though with the you know audio cassette so when netflix came about it was amazing because first of all you didn't have to go to the blockbuster or to the physical rental store they would just mail you the DVDs. Mm -hmm. You never had this problem of, oh, it's not available. That's another thing I remember is when that hit movie first came out, it would, you know, be sold out. You wouldn't be able to get it until the next week. So Mm -hmm, you could mm -hmm. pretty much always get the DVDs that you wanted when you wanted them. And I remember the really cool thing. You had a list on the Netflix website of the next ones that you wanted to see. So for some reason, you know, one of the movies that you want to see wasn't available, they would send you the next one in your list. And so on. Mm. And then what they did was they they wanted to start a streaming service. So they they offered it for free. They said, you know, as uh, someone who's getting DVDs by mail, now we have the streaming service. But the series and movies on there weren't very good. I remember the early days. But then they started getting, it was actually really interesting. It was a podcast that took different companies that had like competition, you know, to see who would win out in their category. And it was Netflix versus Blockbuster versus Warner Brothers. Mm-hmm. And so this is where I also heard a lot about these things. They they started to introduce the streaming service and then eventually they had good things on there. So that's how we started getting so used to watching things online. That's so interesting. I wonder why streaming came to us so late because what you're talking about, about like you were, you were telling about um, blockbusters, we mm-hmm. did have rental houses like that they didn't have the name blockbuster i don't remember if they ever had any name but yeah we would go and rent our video cassettes there but then it stopped the compact discs took over but no streaming services you mentioned earlier about like how you know it's great for for mida when she sees the previews for this for a new series on on netflix or something Mm -hmm. like that but i think on the other hand from that especially now that there's Disney Plus on the scene, HBO Max, Apple TV Plus, right? So we have all these different platforms now that have all, all of them are investing hugely and creating different series, different movies. So there's really this analysis paralysis of what to watch. Like (laughs) Jordy and I, we keep a a list of series and oftentimes Mm -hmm. we have to just discard things that we want to see, but we don't want to see them so bad because there's just way too many to watch otherwise, right? You know, we don't have so much time. And honestly, sometimes I find myself thinking, should I pause my Netflix subscription? Because I just like mm-hmm. don't get to watch anything there. Uh, about Mira, well, again, I don't think if I'm that strict, <laughs> mom, mm-hmm. but I can't say that she watches too much. She's on her tablet. I don't like her using TikTok. I would rather her watching Netflix movies, really, instead of TikTok. But she doesn't get so much time for that. And when she's on her weekends or spring break is coming, right? So I expect her to watch more, but then I'm more, you know, soft and let her do that. <laughs> you know what? What is interesting? Another, let me throw back this question to you. And what do you think about it? Because that's something I asked my brother when preparing for this podcast, what he thinks was better back then. Um, mm-hmm. And one of the things he mentioned is that he feels right now that back then we had better choices in terms of we were choosing what to watch. And right now, and you also said this, yeah, uh, those streaming platforms recommend us what to watch. What, what is your take on this? The biggest upside is not having to deal with advertisements, but I I feel we still are pretty 
we're still pretty deliberate with the series that we choose to watch. Cause again, we have a list and we, we keep on there, which platform the series we want to watch are. So usually I'll discover these via YouTube just mm-hmm. by watching the trailers, mm-hmm. it's not actually from the homepage of Netflix or something like that. Like it's, mm-hmm. it's very rare. I would start watching a series because Netflix recommended it to me. So maybe it's just, I have a different way to go about it, but we will, like you said, should I unsubscribe from Netflix? This is what we do is we subscribe for a month to a service. We watch the series that we want there. Maybe if we don't finish them, we pay for another month or another month. Mm -hmm. But then we, once we finish them, we unsubscribe from that Mm -hmm. and then we subscribe to the next one. So we won't just, we're not loyal to any of them. We just go to the one that, ah. that has the most series at the moment that we want to watch. <laughs> Interesting. That's what I can recommend I, I've to you. never done this. The thing is with Ukraine, still not all these streaming platforms are available here. Like for example, with Disney Plus, I was considering subscribing to it because of Mira, you know, but it's not available in Ukraine. So sad. Mm. Yeah. You brought up TikTok. I think that that's another thing that I would say was better back in the day was not having any social networks. Do you social, think it I mean, was we, better not having social networks? So when we first started using Facebook, it actually was really nice because, you know, you would keep up with your friends, you would see what mm-hmm. they were up to. When you traveled, for example, you could see where people were. But the thing is that these algorithms have gotten so powerful that they just have us as a hostage. They have our attention hostage. And it causes... I think we talked about this actually last week, but it causes all these different mental problems like anxiety, depression. So I think that life was a bit better before them. You can use these tools. They're all tools, right? But the the problem is, is that most people don't have so much control over their use of it. They're not really deliberate about their use of it, which is probably everything we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And TikTok in particular, and this whole trend towards short content it's really messing with people's ability to pay attention to things with their attention span and this is something that i worry about if i had kids i would really worry about Mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. because if you want to be successful in anything it's like really important that you're able to focus and you're able to you know go deep on something and i would just worry like when my nephews are older are they going to have this capacity to Mm -hmm. really focus and go deep on things with these new technologies, and like you said, these are really deep psychological problems that may appear. I believe mm-hmm. it's time for our educational systems to come up with some solutions. Like, for example, they have so many theoretical classes at school and nothing practical that would really help uh, kids navigate this modern life. So probably it's time to introduce some class like that, how help you benefit from social media and protect yourself from the you know, negative effects it brings, right? Mm-hmm. That would be interesting, yeah. My only concern there would be that kids don't tend to listen to authority. <laughs> I guess it depends on their age, <laughs> but I can just imagine being a teenager and your teacher telling you and rolling your eyes and saying, yeah, whatever, man, and going ahead anyway, <laughs> or even being even more motivated to, to use to, it. Right? To use it. I, I think you should yeah. be, you should be wise. You should smart. You should be smart mm-hmm. and choose the right age. Because I remember when Mira just started school, those first two years, her teacher was a real authority for her. She would just uh, come home and would tell me like, oh, you know, our teacher said this, you know, our teacher said that. And she was truly believing every word her teacher was saying to them. So I think that's exactly the right time for them to Mm -hmm. hear some wise words from the teacher about social media and everything and TikToks, you know. But right now... Before they get too old. Yeah. Before they're a teenager. Mm -hmm, Exactly, (laughs) exactly. And it's... Anyway, we covered uh, videos, movies, TikTok. Let's talk about music. Mm -hmm. I remember you were talking about recording the TV shows you wanted to watch. That wasn't the case for me. We didn't have that video recorder. We just had that video player where you could Mm -hmm. just watch movies but not record them. But I did record uh, music. So when I was like short for money, uh, short on money, what's the right way? Mm -hmm. Short for money. (laughs) <laughs> short on money when you're strapped money. for cash yeah strapped for cash when i was strapped <laughs> for cash <laughs> for short on money i 
couldn't allow myself, you know, buying cassettes. So I would mm -hmm. be listening to our radio station, Ukrainian radio station, and I would just try to catch my favorite song. So for that, you would need always to have an empty cassette in your recorder, in your player, <laughs> <laughs> so that when your favorite song starts, you just push record and you have it. So we would create, you know, mixtapes, I think that's the mm -hmm. term for it. Yeah, mixtapes. Mixtapes, yeah. Okay, and then again, healthy competition or exchange with your friends uh, mm -hmm. with those mixtapes. What was it similar for you? I don't remember ever doing this with tapes, but it was even considered a romantic gesture in oh really the, in the states in the American culture at least that you would make a mixtape for someone with songs that make you think about that person. Mm -hmm. But that's so much effort. What I remember was when Napster became really big and other services like this where you could legally download songs. And oh. it took an eternity. It took you like, you know, an hour to download one song, which would take you five seconds. Never used that. So I've never heard about it. I think piracy <laughs> was thriving here in Ukraine. So I would download <clears throat> all my songs for free, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was that kind of thing that illegally downloading the songs or movies or so on. But it used to be something very slow. I didn't do that. Like I, I kind of came in... Well, I, I don't know if I never did that, but in general, I kind of came in to start listening to music more when iTunes started getting big. So mm -hmm. you would buy them okay. for a dollar each. I didn't have an allowance, but, you know, maybe birthday money and stuff or people mm -hmm, would give mm -hmm. you an iTunes gift card and mm. use that to buy the songs that I wanted. And then I would burn a CD. We called this like burning a CD. So burn a CD. You had, yeah, that you would put a blank CD into the drive uh -huh. and then you could create a mixed CD, I guess, instead of a mixed tape. And I would give this sometimes as like a present to a friend or I'd make one for my mom with like songs I was listening to so she could see what's hip, you know? Oh, so interesting. <laughs> I've never done anything like that. So sweet. Like, sh I mean, like sharing with mom or friends as a gesture, right? But mm -hmm. let me let me ask you, what was it perceived as a romantic gesture? And also, why is it called like a mixtape? Mixtape. Is it a, like, by the way, spelled as a one word? Mm -hmm. Mixtape. Yeah, I believe so. It's a tape because a cassette is also called a tape. Mm -hmm. um, you call the player, for example, a tape player. And oh. it probably comes from the, remember it's black or brown, the actual like plastic mm -hmm. thin thing yeah, yeah, that yeah. went inside of the VHSs and the cassettes that was called tape. So the short name became tape for those. And a mixtape because it's a mix of songs on a tape, right? It was romantic because you had to go through all the efforts, like you were saying, to hit record right when that song came on. Or I don't know how else people did this. I think it's like you would maybe record it on like your Walkman or something, you know, <laughs> when it was like playing <laughs> mm -hmm, on, mm -hmm. on a CD or a tape that you had from your house. And you would mix different songs together that made you think of that person. So you can think that that's very romantic yeah. if you're listening to a tape and it's like, oh, he played, he, you know, mm -hmm, this song mm -hmm. makes him think of mm -hmm. me. Oh. We would call it a playlist nowadays, right? We would create playlists for traveling, playlists mm -hmm. for working out, playlists. I don't know. Would you yes. present a playlist as a romantic gesture nowadays? Maybe you could like share a, you know, if you're trying to swoon someone or trying to. Ooh, know, swoon. swoon. What word. is the word? <laughs> If you're trying to woo someone, that's to you would woo, woo someone, someone and they would swoon. Yeah. If you're trying Can to you woo explain someone. the both words? <laughs> to woo someone and to swoon. Okay. If you woo someone, you're trying to show them your romantic interest and get them to be interested in you. This sounds like very old fashioned. And if you swoon, <laughs> it's like when you're listening to that mixtape and you're like, oh, you know. Okay. You, you melt swoon. down. You're <laughs> melting down. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'd be a bit different if you have a meltdown you're you go crazy or you yeah you burn that's out, another you, know, you have a melt so you cannot say you that you're melt you melt just you melt okay mm -hmm. that's an just interesting let, let let give a short lesson to our language nerds here <laughs> so if you say i'm melting it's this mm -hmm. swooning thing it's like something right. made you say oh <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> but if you melt have a meltdown that's the collocation to have a meltdown. You are very stressed. You are nervous. You are angry. Mm -hmm. You could mm -hmm. even go crazy, right? You end up in the nut house in the psychological ward. Oh, so seriously. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be very serious, yeah. But I would say, Ksenia, if we're talking about has technology made our life better, Spotify has hands down made my life so much better. I couldn't live without Spotify. Really? I started listening to it 
in the early days. And then I took a break from it because just the ads and everything. And then somehow I came back to it. And then I remember it was in the early days of Real Life English and we were working on a launch, launching a new product, I believe. So I was working a lot and I was listening to music while I was working. And it's just like, I got sick of the ads. They're like, oh, three months trial for free. I was like, oh, I'm going to do that. So like throughout the launch, I'll not have to listen to these annoying ads. Okay. But of course, then I was screwed because I couldn't go back to listening with the ads. Here I see the difference between us. So I hear you are that type of person who can combine work and listen to music in the background, right? And I need it. <laughs> you need it. <laughs> you can't work without like water. it. I need exactly. water and music. <laughs> I see. I think most of people are like that. And I'm somehow, I don't know if it comes back to my childhood, maybe it was too silent mm -hmm. in my house or something. I, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know why. But I... I'm getting so much distracted by music. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I work on some projects, I don't listen to music. I cannot. I, I'm getting distracted. I think it's different levels of sensitivity. Maybe it's sim similar to like the introvert, extrovert that they say that actually has to do with a question of sensitivity, like how sensitive you are to social interaction. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's similar. I had a friend in college who could be studying or working on a paper or whatever with the TV on and actually preferred that, mm -hmm. like preferred mm -hmm. to have the TV on. I, I couldn't do that. Like I'd yeah. be way too tempted, whatever yeah. is on, even if it's not something I like, I'd be way too tempted to be looking up and seeing looking, what's on the yeah. TV. Yeah, yeah. It she, reminds me of my dad. Like he cannot mm -hmm. fall asleep without uh, TV or without news. And I would mm -hmm. never fall asleep if anything would be in the background, like, you know, talking. <laughs> And it's better for your sleep because all that light going into your eyes right yeah, before yeah, you're yeah. sleeping isn't doesn't help with your restfulness. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about this question. I don't know if you've come to a to a consensus, Ksenia, about whether we're better off now with all the technology or not. Yeah. I think we could have another whole podcast yeah, discussing yeah. other things. Mm -hmm. But I'm also really curious to hear your guys' opinions, either based on what we've been talking about or even just your general intuition as far as whether life is better now or when you're younger. I feel like... I can't just give a clear answer like, yes, life was better before, life is better now, because it depends what we talk about, right? And I feel like a very old man if I'm like, life was so much better in my day, you know, <laughs> like a grandfather. But you could also comment that down on, on YouTube. Let us know. Is it better before technology or with technology? What's your general opinion? For me, it's totally like more positive thing. Maybe it's related to a small childhood trauma or something. I don't know. <laughs> I was not that young, but let me share this little story with you. So that was my first trip abroad. I was a teenager, maybe around 12, maybe. And I went to the Czech Republic for Christmas mm -hmm. holidays. It was like an organized tour from our city, the group of kids, different age. And one of our friends of the family was working as a tour guide. So my parents, you know, took the risk to send me uh, with that group. Back in the day, we didn't have mobile phones, so there was no connection. And I spent the whole week there for the very first time in a foreign country. Before that, I had never left my town or my house, my mom, right? And we, I didn't have any connection with them. But that wasn't the worst thing. The worst thing came when we were coming back. And somehow the... Plans changed for whatever reason. We we're not coming back to my city. Uh, we were coming back by train to the nearest city. So, and I think my parents got the news, of course. They were expecting me, but there was some delay. And by the time mm. when I was at that train station together with the group, everyone was already taken, like picked up by their parents. I stayed alone with a couple of adults from our group and we were waiting for my parents and they were not coming no mobile phones we couldn't you know right get the news are they coming soon or not anything happened so those people just offered to give me a ride to our city because they were coming back and when i came back home with them i remember it like right now my mom is standing and like she's hugging me oh ksusha finally you came back and like i'm hugging her back and i'm asking like hey, where's dad and here comes the moment 
and she like there is a moment of awkward silence and she's like <laughs> he went to pick you up like you know <laughs> he's not with you you're not with him <laughs> yeah, yeah like and and i sat in the chair and i cried i cried oh. because i felt ashamed i felt sorry for my dad that i imagined him looking for me and me not mm -hmm. being there so i really cried so i wish i had a mobile phone back then in that situation you know yeah just to give that the makes news. sense i remember sometimes when my parents were late to pick me up it wasn't that bad, but I do remember sometimes where it would have been really helpful if they could have called me or called someone mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. say, you know, I'm on my way. I'll be there in five minutes. Yeah. And right now, Mira is always in touch with me because, you know, we bought her the smartwatch. So I always call her. There you go. I hate it when it runs out of battery. <laughs> <laughs> it, it gives you a sense of security, right? Yeah. Yeah. And like, it's amazing how many things we have just on this device that in the 90s were different things the camera the mm -hmm. obviously it's a phone but like we don't really think of this as being a phone primarily anymore we yeah. were talking about with Jordi for example like the maps the, mm -hmm. the the maps is like the handiest thing right if you're in another city and you're lost and you can just open it and you can figure out where to go yeah and i remember when i was growing up we had my parents had the map of the united states and of the southwest united states and they get it out like this and a huge the, thing my mom trying to navigate like where you know where, okay where yeah. are we and where do we have to go where do we have to turn it's really crazy so Ksenia obviously we could talk about this for hours and hours and hours and maybe we'll do if you guys want to let us know if you would like us to do a part two on the subject like we did a brainstorm of what was different when we were kids in the 90s from now and I know I have a long list of things that I didn't talk yeah. about so yeah I have what I believe will be a very relevant game. It'll really put you to the test okay. about your knowledge about the 1990s. Since both of us grew up in the 1990s, <laughs> I thought that this could be fun. And we grew up in different corners of the world. So let's see if we had the same influences okay. growing up. Okay, let's see. The game is called What's That? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be sharing with you images and for each of them, you just have to say, what's that? All right, Ksenia, what's that? Okay, seems like it's a floppy disk, isn't it? Yeah, surprised you, you even know the term there. Jordi and I were talking about this the other day because it's interesting that the save icon on digital things like Microsoft Word is still from this, this floppy disk, which is what was before we had like CDs that we would burn things onto. We would store, or I guess now we'd use like a pen drive, right? We would store on one of these weird floppy disks. Yeah. What does it mean if something's floppy, by the way? I don't know. Floppy, maybe it's just like not very reliable or stable. Or, I don't know. That's flaky. Flaky, okay. Flaky is a person who's not reliable. Okay, and what is floppy? Floppy is something that's not rigid. So if you mm. shake it, for example, it... it flops it does okay. like this if you're watching yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so it's a little bit like unstable maybe i was thinking in the right direction but yeah mm. okay not stable mm -hmm. yeah like you might think of a bunny rabbit that has like floppy ears the mm. ones that go down mm -hmm. instead of sticking straight up mm -hmm. okay we didn't use it for quite long though right like at least me it was like a very super short period with the floppy yeah discs. yeah it was in the 90s <laughs> <laughs> but i i definitely remind those from remember those from my childhood Okay, so this one. Let me remember how you call this. Like a pager? Would you call it a pager? Yes. Okay. Pager is the formal name. So we're looking at a device here for those of you listening that has just a very small screen and some buttons. And it has like a, a message and the time and date. And we also would call this more informally a beeper. I don't know if you oh, remember that episode of beeper. Friends where Ross gets a beeper so that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. his yeah, yeah. ex-wife can let him know when the baby's coming. Anyway. <laughs> I have never used it. Did you have it in your family? Have anyone used it no. from your family? No one was important enough, I guess, <laughs> to have a, a beeper. <laughs> but doctors, okay. they were very popular for doctors, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. Let's see if you had this mm -hmm. when you were a kid. It's like okay. a type of doll that we're looking at. I don't remember the name of this toy, and I haven't played with this one. Did you have any of those? I had one. I begged my parents to get me one because really? it was all the rage when I was a kid during one year. So what's the name? It's called a Furby. Furby. No. And it was a, okay. I think it was an alien was what they said it was, but it was a robot. So it would talk to you and it would tell you things like, you know, I'm oh, hungry. Really? And 
really? there were all these rumors even that came about that they were you know trying to kill children or something like this <laughs> very crazy things but it, it was a huge cultural phenomenon for like a year hmm. in the states okay i think maybe i saw it somewhere but um no i, I didn't have it i didn't have it how about these it's we're looking at a cartoon here mm -hmm. and it's these little blue characters Okay, those are Smurfs. I know those. I Smurfs. think we had even the comic books with Smurfs. So, mm. so I know them, yeah. I think they did a reboot. I don't know if Mira has watched it. Um, Maybe she watched. She's already at that age where sometimes she watches something without me. So I, <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't have time to catch up. And what are they called in Ukrainian? Do you remember the name? Yeah, we, we call them Smurfiki. Smurfiki. That's close. Because in different languages, I've found that they can be so different. Like in Spanish, it's pitufo. Oh, what does it mean, pitufo? For what word does it come? I don't know. We have Humbert and Mate who are native speakers here. I don't know if they know if it has some origin. Smurf is just like a weird word. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything, right? I just wanted to mm -hmm. ask you, like, what does it mean, Smurf? Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's just like a made up word. Yeah? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, who's that? We're looking at a woman in a red jumpsuit. Okay. <laughs> you, I don't know what's going on. We're connected somehow in the universe. <laughs> Just yesterday, for whatever reason, I was reminding my partner and I asked him, can you guess this song from the first two or three, like, you know, notes? <laughs> this <laughs> melody. Uh, so, of course, this is Britney Spears. She was all the rage when I was a teenager. And I had a friend who was just like, you know, totally into her, like with all those posters and oh, of wow. course, the songs. Yeah. Super fan. And the first notes, was it, was it this, the song? Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, of course. <laughs> 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 and then this scene from the school, she, she's bored. She was a superstar. And then she, she fell pretty hard, unfortunately. All right. There's another one. I'm not sure if you'll have it. What's that? We're seeing like a hedgehog, but it's a, uh, what is this material called? Terracotta, maybe? Mm. Like what potted plants are made out of. And then out of the top of it, instead of having fur or quills that a hedgehog would have, it has small green plants growing out of its back. Okay, so we didn't have them like hedgehogs. What we had is like a round ball with the same material, and it would have... Um, weed grains so uh, it wouldn't look so curly like here it would like just like a weed you know this grass like a straight grass mm -hmm. and yeah we had it and it is so much fun to see it growing yeah I don't know how, how would you call it do you know the name of it this no, is called a chia pet and it uh, it was a big thing so they had them with all this was I think like the a classic one, the the hedgehog. But they had them with all sorts of different shapes. They did one when there was the elections in 2008, I guess, with Obama. They had an Obama chia pet, for example. Really? So, yeah. Oh, I didn't and see that. the commercials were very typical. They'd be like, ch 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 chia ch 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 obama This chia obama is a special edition. It was like the... Does it... It's called the jingle at the beginning. Is it called chia because of the seeds? Yeah. I think it's the same seeds that now it's like a superfood, right? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm, exactly. So we see here kids having fun with some thing which looks like inflatable mattress, but it's not, I suppose. And I don't know what it is, Ethan, yeah. what it is. It's a long plastic mat that has a, it's not actually inflatable. You hook it up to a hose, to a garden hose that you use for watering the plants. Okay. And then it has little holes in it, so it gets completely wet. And then kids would run and jump, you know, chest first and slide down it. Oh. And it's called a slip and slide. Should be so much fun. Mira would love it. No, we didn't yeah. have anything like that. Never saw that. So this was huge in the 90s. Mm. But to say it's huge, meaning it was very popular. It's made a comeback because my nephews have one now. Just a couple more. What's that? Okay. I know <laughs> what it is. Never played. I don't think anyone in my class had it. How would you call it? We called it Tamagotchi. Yeah. It's the same name. That's the brand. Maybe from Japan. These were all the rage as well for a while, but they would always die. It was very, very sad. A Humbert saying in, sp in Spanish is called mascotita. Mascotica. Okay. Mascotica. So like a little pet. <laughs> You guys had yeah. like a local version. All right, the last one. Who are they? 
Okay, those are Spice Girls. Nice. Yay. I wasn't sure if they were as popular in Ukraine as they were in the States. They were, they were. What was the most popular song, let me remember? If you want to be my lover, you got to get with my friends. Yeah, I think this one. I think this one. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. I think they split up and some of girls, you know, started solo careers or something. Mm -hmm. Victoria Beckham became, mm -hmm. well, now she's, I don't know what her her maiden name before she got married was, but she's married to David Beckham. The fun fact about them, they all had these nicknames, right? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There was Sporty Spice, Ginger Spice, Scary Spice, and Baby Spice. <laughs> Did you have your favorite one? My favorite when I was six, my favorite was Baby Spice. Baby Spice, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think I liked Victoria, but, but also this sporty one was so unusual to see like a sporty Sporty woman mm, sporty in a pop, in the 90s. Sporty, sporty girl in the nineties in mm -hmm. the pop band. So yeah, I think you I might call it a uh, tomboy. Have you heard that term? No. What What does it mean? I don't know if this is offensive nowadays, actually, but we would use it when I was younger. Would be a girl who dressed like and maybe acted a bit like a boy. They didn't wear the typical pink dresses yeah. and skirts and things like this. They would maybe dress more like sporty like she would or comfortable mm -hmm. tomboy when i was six they were really really big and even like posh spice i don't know if i knew when i was six what posh means mm -hmm. but posh of mm -hmm. course is british english it's basically a person who likes expensive things or might be very fashionable right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah <laughs> thank you so much for taking me back into our 90s into our childhood yeah <laughs> a blast from the past right yeah, bless from the past. And I think you did quite well. You got like seven out of nine. So I, I thought it might be less. So it's interesting to see that there was so much in common. And by the way, Ksenia, I noticed we used some really nice expressions here to talk about things that were from the 90s and so on. Like we said that it's a blast from the past or mm -hmm. that something was all the rage. So for those of you that want to actually be able to use these expressions yourself when you get in a conversation with someone or just to understand them when you're watching your favorite series, then you should definitely listen to this podcast over on the Real Life English app because we give you vocabulary flashcards for every single lesson for the most important words and expressions so that you will never forget them. They'll be right on the tip of your tongue anytime you get into a conversation with someone. What are you digging this week, Ksenia? Yeah, so Ethan, let me share it with you. I'm not a big fan of rom-coms, but this one was a real delight for my eyes because it had like picturesque landscapes of Ireland. I don't know if you saw the preview on Netflix or not, but a couple of days ago, a few days ago, I watched this new Netflix movie, Irish Wish, with mm. Lindsay Lohan. Have you heard of it? I did see something about it, I think, on YouTube, but was it any good? Mm -hmm. One of the movies that is not so sophisticated or difficult, complex <laughs> plot, it's just like a classical rom-com. Mm -hmm. uh, and what just made me stay and watch this movie is this incredible Irish landscape yeah they would show the cliffs of mower mower so it's spelled like m-o-h-e-r but what i learned is the irish pronunciation would be the cliffs of mower and they are very famous because they were portrayed like in several movies harry potter mm -hmm. included oh, wow. so you might uh, have seen them so they have a photo shoot but in those cliffs are in the background mm -hmm. um and another one that's what i wanted to ask you actually um, when you hear Ireland, what associations do you have in your head? Oh, Guinness, <laughs> rain, <laughs> <laughs> leprechauns, leprechauns, yes, the color so, green, shamrocks, exactly, color green. Mm -hmm. Like, there were just like this, I know, sumptuous shades of green, of like all hints of green. Mm -hmm. And the shamrock, I don't think they showed it in the movie, but that's the first association with me. Yeah, you know, this like three uh, leaf clover. That's what you see when you hear about Ireland or when there's like advertisement campaign or something related to Ireland, mm -hmm. you would most often see this um, plant, right? A shamrock. And uh, I don't know about the US, but in my childhood, uh, if you found a four leaf clover, Mm -hmm. you were supposed to make a wish because it is considered a lucky clover. Is it the same in America? 
It's the same. I don't know if you're supposed to make a wish, but it's considered good luck. So it's like you should pick it. You should keep it with you because it's it's good luck. Shouldn't you eat it? I don't think you should eat it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we went as far as eating it just really? to make sure it just brings to... luck in. <laughs> I don't think so. The luck stays with us. But anyway, so the movie is called Irish Wish. And Mm -hmm. maybe there is this, you know, connection to this uh, lucky clover. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Uh, But uh, Lindsay Lohan's character, she makes a wish to be getting married to a guy instead of her best friend. And the wish actually comes true. But it turns out that that's not what she really wanted. And there is a very funny expression from the movie. She um, runs back to this magic tree, magic bench where she made a wish. And she says, oh, I need to unwish my wish. (laughs) (laughs) I I found it so hilarious. Like, I need to unwish my wish. And by the way, uh, in case with Lindsay Lohan, she has, she's an American actress, right? But she has Irish ancestry. She's also mm. red-headed. I, I learned this new word for this color of her hair. It's not just red. It's auburn. It's like yeah. reddish brown. Yeah. Auburn. Auburn. Well, mine's pretty quick today, Ksenia. So I have a piece of technology that I'm digging mm. myself. I got a new treadmill that goes under the desk. In fact, I think it'd be called a walking pad. This is another name that I saw because a treadmill tends to be to run on. And exactly. I can't imagine a treadmill under on. your desk. Right. <laughs> because usually they have like a big part in the front and things mm-hmm, on the side mm-hmm. that you can like grab onto, I guess, if you were to start falling or something like this. And this is just like the flat part underneath. So it's okay. a bit smaller and everything. And it's just for walking. So the great thing about this is that I don't know if you've heard people say this, that uh, sitting is the new smoking. So we say that something is the new something. Mm-hmm. Like I think this comes from yeah, yeah, yeah. even the Chanel, like the little black dress that people say, like blue is the new black or this mm-hmm. year yellow is the new black, you know, whatever's mm-hmm. in fashion. Mm-hmm. You hear people say too, like sitting is the new smoking. Sitting is the new smoking, like sedentary work. Exactly. Like very, so many mm-hmm. of us, in, myself included, of course, like work in front of a computer all day. So this is great because it helps me to... I can work and be walking at the same time. So it helps me to take a break because it was something I was trying to get more steps in during the day. This is like very important for your health, but it just was very, very difficult for me to prioritize into my day. And this is a way that I can kill two birds with one stone by doing it while I'm working. So I'm able to, and I'm already finding like it really helps because if I'm just sitting for a long time, I start to kind of, my energy goes down. And so I've noticed that it helps me to keep my energy up. So for other people who have sedentary jobs like you, Ksenia, I would highly recommend yeah. this and anyone who's listening. <laughs> <laughs> but I still can't picture it. Like you you are not... Because when you first told about a thread mill, of course, I imagined that from the gym. Then mm-hmm. when you said that this is something smaller going under your desk, I imagined you sitting and going. But that's <laughs> not how, it's, how it happens, I suppose. That's a funny you actually picture, stand... Like- <laughs> Sitting in your feet like you're moving. That's what I had in my head, but then I thought it would it would be ridiculous. Just yeah. you know. I no, even it's... like we were talking about music, that you are listening to music while working. So I was mm-hmm. thinking to myself, when the music style changes, when it becomes faster, do you <laughs> do you start <laughs> doing this faster? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I this this desk actually I'm at it, it's got a motor so I can lift it and lower it. So when I do the treadmill, I lift it mm. up. So it's my screen is at eye level standing and uh, and I'm on, on the treadmill, obviously. I'm waiting for our next one-on-one meeting with you. And you will be walking <laughs> I'm not and talking. Doing, I'm not courageous <laughs> enough to do it during a meeting because you're just seeing me like bobbing, you know, my head going up and down. But that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying it, but trying to picture how you're working and walking. Great, Ksenia. Well... You, dear viewer or dear listener, if you are enjoying these lessons, a free way you can support us is by leaving us a five-star review wherever you're listening. So on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or if you're over on YouTube, the way you can do this is by subscribing to the channel, hitting the like button. All this stuff really helps us to reach more people so more people can have a lot of fun learning with us. And remember that no matter what divides us, that which unites us is far greater. As we've seen today, even the technology that we grew up with in the 90s was so similar. So one, two, three. Oh, yeah. yeah.
that. It's so weird. In the period of our lives when we have so many tools for connection, we still feel lonely. So it's really no secret that social networks have made us lonelier than ever. What they don't realize is there's entire teams of engineers whose job is to use your psychology against you. So here at Real Life English, we talk all the time about how important it is to know why you are learning a language. So my purpose for each of the six different languages that I've learned has always been really closely related to the friends I had that spoke that language.